Hey there, everybody. How's it going? Let's see. Yeah, look, <clears throat> looks like uh, looks like we have a few viewers with us. Appreciate it. I uh, I know this isn't the most uh, <laughs> exciting development, but I, I think we're making something cool. Um, let's see the. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. Well, take as long as you need. You know, at the end of the day, like, uh, my main goal is to just get some work done. And, uh, you know, hey there, Carol. How's it going? Uh, M, M. Luz. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, yeah, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, Shardo, welcome back. Let's see. Let's see. How how's Discord been? Um, let's see. The uh, currently. I don't. Incomprehensible, Billy Bob. Welcome. <laughs> um, let's see. The. All right, everything's loading in. This is why you don't want to have all your materials in the game, because like, it just, it just chugs. It is so slow. But yeah, and once that stuff pops in, it'll look, it'll look better. Though, so, you know, the non-textured building here does not look horrible. Just saying. All right. We're getting things. Yay! Okay, skybox is in. Yeah, it's, ma it's making it through. CJ, do you add a new joke fund to starting screen? Um, we will definitely be updating that. Um, I don't want to take pun requests right now because there's no chance I will I will remember it at, at the at the time. Uh, but yeah, no, that will be getting an upgrade. I like this pier. It looks good. It looks good. It's a good pier. You know? Uh, but yeah, okay, so let's let's hope let's refocus on uh, getting this all all this stuff blocked out. Is it possible that I uh, I can donate idle animation assets. Um, we're not doing that right now. Um, I, I'm not necessarily against free assets, but uh, you know, I the, the problem is whenever when it comes to community creativity stuff, like I want to support it, but at the same time, um, I have to recognize the fact that you know, just from a purely this is my full time job. I've been doing it since for 15 years. Um, a lot of uh, community assets, you know, don't necessarily hold up to the quality of other things. But, you know, yours might. But that's the thing. Like, if I say yes to yours, then there's, like, going to be some poor 10-year-old who sees that and is like, oh, I want to I wanna add something. And then, like, I have to tell them no and break their heart. Um, so, yeah. So that that's why it's kind of a... Uh, it's kind of it's kind of a, a a mixed bag taking community work uh, because you know you want everyone to feel included and for something like animation or um, you know it, it it's just truly a a a tough a tough difficulty but no I appreciate the offer um, can you add like an open mouth mask that you have lent some uh, yeah. Uh, I, to be honest, if you if you'd asked me, I would have said we probably already had that. But uh, as you are asking me, I'm guessing we don't. Um, just being able to add lenses to things in general would be nice. Okay, so yeah, we're just. All right, here we go. All right. How 
loans they take you to plan stuff out, like the buildings and stuff. Um, uh, like, I guess that arguably this is the planning process. Uh, I think for the original map, it took like 20 or 30 hours to uh, get the initial layout done. Um, and so I guess we are kind of on track for that. Um, it really is, though, a... Uh, it's like, it's as I said, it's a sculpting process. Like, you know, put something down. You know, if it looks good, you keep it there. If it doesn't, you know, remove it and place it with something else that looks better. And then, you know, just keep on iterating. And uh, at some point, you have a good game. Uh, playgrounds. I am open to the idea of adding a playground because I think it's a good idea from like a city standpoint. However, it kind of has an issue of uh, making a playground which any character can use is a bit tough. Like, especially with the different scaling factors, you want to do it like an animation for the slide and swings and uh, you know the little spinny thing. Is that, is that, is that called a merry-go-round? Uh, or, or is that when it's an electric thing at a circus? I don't know. Uh, but like. I, I definitely do want to, you know, have, especially for like the school area, I think that would make sense. But, um, you know, le leading up to that point, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a, a you know, that's, that's the funny thing about game development. It's like, um, there's this one meme somewhere where it's like, game development is, is a weird mystical dark magic because you can ask them, Hey, can we have a boss battle uh, where where they shoot fire out of their mouth and they'll be like, sure. Types three lines done. And then uh, if then if you ask them, can we make it so that the character can wear a scarf? Oof, no, impossible. Weeks of work. It's um, it's very funny the things that are just tough to do in game development unless you plan it out beforehand. Okay, so I think this is, this is looking okay. Are you going to add store? Uh, yes, maybe. I want some of it to actually lead directly into the park. However, I don't know how much space, because like, you know, this area will get pretty tight pretty quickly, so we're going to have to use this this fella. This is why we had this fella, because I was honestly imagining these were a little bit bigger than, uh, than that, you know? Like, I was imagining this was like, you know, one, one story building. Okay. So with that in mind... Uh, let's see, when the game comes out, I uh, gonna make a superhero life two series. Oh. Um, let's see, I need to. Uh, I, I like the little heart emoji, it blocks out a word on the screen. <laughs> um, so I guess let, let me pop out the chat. Does that, does that allow me to see it better? Um, Okay, you're, okay, I'm going to make a superhero like you series. Awesome. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, it's always cool when, uh, you know, there's, there's like, fan uh, engagement with that kind of stuff. It's like, anyone can think their own work is cool. It's a unique experience for someone else to like your work enough to incorporate it into their own. I think that's the ultimate compliment. Um... And that's why I like open source and stuff. Now, if only I like documenting the stuff I open source, I might actually be a prolific developer. Sorry, I'm just 
stretching those out. Have you ever met the owner of Roblox or any admins? Uh, yes, I was. I, I'm not sure if y'all remember this. I was a Roblox intern for uh, three summers. Uh, I was in the accelerator program. Superhero Life 2 was made in the Roblox accelerator program. Um, so, yeah, though it was, it, it, um, Superhero 2 was finished in it. I, I had already started working on it uh, before. Like the, the trailer you made was, sorry, that you made, that I made that uh, for, for the Superhero Life 2. Um, that was made pre, um, pre, what's it called? Pre-internship. All, all the internship did was improve the onboarding, some basic game design stuff, and then I filled out the interiors. It was a, you know, good for playtesting and like actually improving stuff. Like the, the, the tutorial stuff, that was all due to um, some very helpful feedback. Um, yeah, so definitely. Um, Hey, I appreciate it. Yeah, the um, the more the merrier. Yeah, but no, I, I have met, uh, I mean, there's a photo of me on my Twitter with uh, Doderman. Um, I don't, uh, I think he's still the owner. I don't know how much that corporate structure changes on a daily basis. But no, I, I, I'm i familiar with all of them. And I mean, they made a little documentary about me, so I think for the most part, they recognize me as well. Um, so that's cool. It, whenever I go to the headquarters, it feels like home. Uh, and I feel really, really happy. Um, so, you know, I, if I was a better programmer, I might, you know, I might have applied, but really, unless you're an amazing programmer, uh, you can, you know, you, there, there's still like, you know, DevRel and such, which has, uh, not necessarily that people in DevRel aren't good programmers. <laughs> Um, just for the most part, that's where I see the community developers ending up um, uh, when they don't have like a CS major. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm just not. I'm just too much of a PR nightmare. I guess. Like I, I, uh, I don't have the uh, the saint-like qualities that are required to deal with um, Roblox developers on a daily basis. Honestly, dealing with Roblox community members so much easier because they just want to play a fun game. Uh, Roblox developers have this potent mix of like immaturity and profit incentive, <laughs> where it, it's like they all they they're all basically hearing that like shown in battle music at all times of like I'm gonna become the best developer, I'm gonna make the best game, um, and then like a lot of a lot of them don't handle, uh, don't see their own limitations very well. And I know this because that was me for a very long time. Arguably, it's something you never fully escape. But, you know, I, and it's just, you know, I, I have had many developers DM me. I have had only a few listen to what I tell them. Which maybe means I just have bad advice. But for what it's worth, the ones who do listen to me tend to do all right. Better than me. I wish I could follow my own advice <laughs> to the level I'd like tell them like, hey, yeah, keep the scope small, release it quickly, don't don't get too ambitious, test early, and then here I am. Um, you know, making a map bigger and better than before and not testing for two months. Oh well. I guide others to a treasure I cannot possess. Um, are you just revamping the map, or your plans to change other aspects of Sugar Life 2? I will be changing other aspects. Uh, not, well, not changing, but re, uh, remastering, I guess. Um, I try to say remastering because remaking is already taken, and that's a different thing. That's, that was a community effort that I wasn't a part of. So I don't want to step on that, you know? Uh, but yeah, so no, this is the remaster. Um, and I, my main goal is I'm going to take the spirit of the first game, like in my head, here, here's the canon that I'm telling myself. This is what this would look like if I had been updating it continuously. 
you know, like, like if instead of going on to Superhero Life 3 and a bunch of other projects, I had just worked on this game for years and uh, slowly improved it over time, you know, started by like, you know, see the evolution, like start by swapping out the park with this, like moving, you know, moving things around, changing the building shapes, like, you know, improving interiors, like ideally you would have something that looks like this at the end, because I don't want to, I don't want to remove the feel of the original one, but I do have to accept how dated and limited it is, you know? Um, is it possible there's a difference of idle animations? Um, I, I'm, I'm definitely fine with improving the animations uh, available, especially now that there are so many on Roblox. I, uh, let's see, I might have to, um, one thing which I'm going to have to experiment with uh, is basically, I know a lot of, um, what's it called? A lot, like, I, you remember a few months ago how there was a big stink with the developers because Roblox made it, well, temporarily announced that they were going to uh, make it so that the official Roblox catalog items cannot be used in-game unless you can buy them in-game, um, which I felt was a bit of an overreach, especially consider like, I think, I, I think that the official Roblox items, the ones that are created by Roblox, like the non-UGC items, I think those should be considered open source, you know? Like, that was made by Roblox. There were, there were literally, there was literally a decade where you could not upload meshes yourself, so you had to use those. Like, if I remember correctly, when Superior Life 2 came out, uh, you could not do custom meshes. At least I don't think so. Uh, could be wrong. At the very least, I definitely didn't know how to do it. Um, and... So a lot of the in-game items, like you had to use either unions or Roblox catalog meshes. And so I think it's, I don't think Roblox should remove their own items from free use. Because I think that's very much what it is, though I'm sure a lawyer would disagree. It's just, you know, the spirit of things. Hey there, welcome back, hee hee hoo hoo. Fun, fun name. Um, let's see, what do you think about uh, yeah, the uh, Rick? So, is Regret Evader Doors is that a is that a game? Is that a is that a creepy pasta? Uh, sorry, y'all are gonna. I I've been old for so long. I swear I wasn't even in the know of like these different memes when I was uh, when I was younger. The last time I was in the know was like in 2011 when people made a bunch of Friday the 13th games. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is the port. Yeah, right now we're just blocking out different um, different buildings. Um, yeah, it's pretty fun. Oh. Did you did y'all know I'm actually friends with the guy who made a normal elevator? Or at least I hope we're still friends. I haven't spoken to him in a few years. I think maybe two years. Last time I went to the developer conference. Um, man, that first internship was wild. I was uh, friends with uh, Insanely Luke, who did uh, Heroes of Robloxia. Um, Busy city guy, uh, Curtis, he, he works at Roblox now. Um, very, very chill dude. Let's see, what, who else? Um, I was friends with, uh, now do the Harlem Shake, Eric. Very, uh, very, one of the funniest guys I know. Like, genuinely, like, he is just, he is, like, very charismatic and fun. Just lights up the room when he walks in. Um, uh, let's see. I I didn't talk. I, the script on was also there, and Locard, who are some of the most talented programmers I know. I, I don't know if I would say that we, we were the best friends. We didn't hang out too often. I know uh, Locard made some key anime recommendations, which uh, I, I remember enjoying. Um, let's see. 
think he told me to. I think uh, I think he was only told me about Bleach. I just watched Death Note and I was like, wow, this anime stuff's pretty fun. And yeah, it's just, um, let's see, I I was friends with um, Sim Builder. <laughs> <sighs> For what it's worth, I wasn't exactly, you know. Here's the thing: I don't like making enemies of people, even when they're saying things that I consider repulsive. I guess, like in my head, I still remember the guy as like a very nice, um, a, a person who was very nice to me. Um, and then, you know, started getting some weird COVID vax conspiracy nonsense, and just. I don't know. Whenever he told me about like various conspiracies, I'd sit down and I'd be like, "No, nah, man, that's not how it works. It's not. That doesn't make sense." Just kind of hoping he'd pull through and like you know get his head together. It was just a phase. Um, I don't know. He's still in jail right now. Uh, it's a sad thing because I don't know. I uh, he he was genuinely toxic to many people. But he wasn't always like that to, to you know, back, back when I knew him, at, the, at least as far as I knew. Uh, Sim Builder, person I, I used to be friends with. But yeah, no, very quickly though, that guy started making a really bad name for himself. It's just a shame. Like, I don't know. I, I don't, he's wrecked his life, and hopefully once he gets out of this current mess in however many years, um, he will, you know, sit down and turn it around. Like, hope oh, should give him a long time to reflect. Um, yeah, the uh, it's just embarrassing now to say that you knew him. It's like, oh no, I'm associated with him. <laughs> yeah, but still, you know, for what it's worth, the guy was nice to me, and I did my best to try to. Um, you know, have polite debates with him about some of his crazier ideas. But sometimes, I guess, what you need is not a polite debate from a friend, but like genuine mental health resources. Uh, let's see, the... Yeah, more, more some of the less fun CJ lore. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, let's see... Um, but I can happily say none of my other friends are in prison. Uh, the, let's see, when will the update uh, be released? Sorry, okay, I want to go, to, I, I, I kind of zoned out. Okay, welcome back, Wolf. Um, will the lighting be upgraded? Um, yes, I believe so. Um, right now it's actually on future. Though, realistically, it'll probably become voxel when the time comes, just because, like, okay, guys, watch this. Watch this. Okay. So the thing to know about um, rendering, when you when your game is too slow because of rendering, um, it, it'll be because of this thing called draw calls right here. I don't know how well y'all can see it, but it's, there's about 516 draw calls right now. As a rule of thumb, I believe you gotta be a, like like 500 draw calls is good. I think a thousand to fifteen hundred is not great, but survivable. Um, and then change it to future, and all of a sudden um, we're hitting like you were, we doubled our, our draw calls. And um, you know, as you can see, the original superhero life was only in the 700s um, with with future. And then with Voxel, it drops down to like 400. So I I do plan on, if I can get Future, I will use Future. If Future slows stuff down too much, which it already looks like it might, because look at how little map we have right now. And like the render is already at, um, well actually, no, this is better. I get it. No, okay. You y'all see what's happening? Y'all have y'all have one guess, um, and that is um. So I do have a a, a Kofi. I I guess I don't know how to make the images pop up. Um. 
but you yeah, know, I appreciate it, y'all. Um, okay, but actually, just to very quickly finish the, my tangent. Um, yeah, so if you if you want to donate to me, uh, Ko-Fi, but also like, I if y'all like me, from like you know just as a person, by all means donate. But if you just like the game, you know I'm monetizing it. It's not a gift. <laughs> you know, like I don't want y'all to be like, oh, I donated for the free game. <laughs> like, yeah. But like, if you if you want to support it, yeah, I, you know, I have a Ko-Fi and I appreciate it. But I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't like. Uh, it feels weird asking asking you to do it. And maybe maybe that'll grow on me. Maybe that's just a muscle YouTubers got to develop. Um, but yeah, the um. But yeah, in terms of uh, let's see, oh, this might have been an in-game monetization thing. I might have just misunderstood. In that case, uh, monetizing the game will have to happen. Um, let's see. But yeah, so lighting. Okay, so if you notice when I point it this way, um, oh yeah, like especially this way. When I point it this way, we get fifteen hundred immediately. When I point it at just the current map. We're at 238. Okay, so that's workable. And that's on, what, what lighting are we on right now? And that's on future. So if we change to voxel, that should literally be to 200. Like, uh, so yeah, no, we're doing all right on the draw calls right now, but that'll only get way worse. Um, so yeah, prepare for that. Notice how much it changes when you move. That shows they're doing some good caching. Um, okay, so am I considering adding Spider-Man and Iron Man emblems? Uh, no, because I do not own the characters of Spider-Man and Iron Man. If that sounds frustrating to you, I don't know, take it up with the U.S. legal system. <laughs> I think characters as old as Spider-Man and Iron Man should be public domain, but they're not, and I want to stay within the law. And so we're just going to have the same like sort of general stuff. Um, I'm not... Yeah. Will performance be good on the game? That's the thing. So I think it will be. But okay, so there's 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 a tug of war. Um there's two there's two ways you can look at uh things. There's you can think of performance as a budget, essentially. If you are getting 120 frames per second and the max Roblox refresh rate is 60 then you could actually be doubling the amount of stuff you do per frame, you know? Like you could make things twice as nice. And so, but then it, inversely, if you're struggling to hit 40 frames per second, then you're doing too much, you know? Like like you've overexerted your budget. And um, I am allowed to add a spider emblem from like a spider, just like a generic spider. I'm not allowed to make it the Spider-Man emblem. You say give it a couple of years, but like, did like like Mickey Mouse, you know that that was like uh, that that took like almost a hundred. They're gonna fight to, for to, tooth and nail for that to uh, show up, and like you know Stan Lee only passed a few years back, so I don't know if I'll be getting access to Spider Man in my lifetime. I think like Legacy Detective Comics Batman might be available, but you know oh jokes of. Y'all, you know I'm a programmer. I don't I don't understand humor unless it's complete nonsense. Um, mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> the difference between a Spider Emblem and Spider Man Emblem is a complicated thing. I will just say that where is that thing? I have it somewhere. Uh, let's see the uh, emblem. Icon? There we go. Okay, let's go. Here we are. All right, so here are the icons that I am committed to. You could be... Well, I'm not going to add this one. <laughs> I'm surprised that... I mean, I guess it's just an eggplant. I don't know what I don't, I don't know what I was talking about. It's just an eggplant. Uh, the... Uh, why do I do this to myself? Um, the... But yeah, now like here are icons that I purchased that I can use um, whenever. Um, I think that, and I'm, I'm also going to hopefully support layering of them and recoloring of them. Um, 
And so, as a result, um, in fact, most of these will be, will have the option to keep it, to keep the original color, but for the most part, these will be like uh, either, I, okay, so I'm going to run through these and try to split it into, into various different meshes. I have a cool little Python workflow for that. So we might get like layers of this. Um, but for the most part, like we're going to add these and they are going to be, um, these are going to be the logos. Like you, if you want to be bathroom sign man, that is your prerogative. Um, yeah, gas man. <laughs> Honestly, these icons will make, yeah, corn man. Uh, that's not corn. What am I talking about? That's wheat. Um, there's got to be corn here somewhere, right? I guess popcorn. That counts, right? Uh, yeah, shrimp man. Okay, if we add scaling, I beg of y'all, someone should be called Shrimp Man and then just get really big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, um, yeah, Sausage Man. <laughs> yeah. It's because he has sausage fingers, like me. Um, let's see. This is kind of cool. I don't, it's a bowling ball, right? Yeah. But no, like, as you can see, a lot of, a lot of potentially good, good ones. Okay. Honestly, this is why we need to focus on the map so that we can make the character customization. You know, like that, that, that's, uh, that's what we need to focus on. We need to keep our head, heads in the game. Hot dog man. Mm -hmm. The, um, there was a, I missed the little uh, Snapchat dancing hot dog. Only aspect of Snapchat that I miss. Does Snapchat still exist? Um, would it take to be in order? What would, what would it take in order to become dev? Oh, it's a very difficult process. Uh, you have to open Roblox Studio, and not give up. Um, that is that is the. Uh, that, that is the recipe. Um, though for what it's worth, there's not one path. If you want to open up VS Code and not give up, if you want to open up uh, Scratch and not give up, all of these are perfectly uh, good starting spots. Um, it's just being a programmer is I want to learn how to give directions to a computer in a more specific way and so that the computer can do cool stuff for me. It's creating value in the digital world. Um, I can't say that. Digital. Digital. No, I can't say world. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so yeah, like if you make something that, like uh, some of the Superhero Life 2 code is just horrible. A lot of this, almost every Superhero Life 1 power was just uh, yanked from gear, you know? Like, like just open source code, like, but Superhero Life 1 still got millions of hits because I, you don't need to like make it from scratch. You can, you can just do your own thing, you know, like, uh, okay, how about, I want to make my life a little bit easier and make it so that this is in the center. Where's the little guy? There it is. Okay. Yeah. So we're just going to put this in the center. Keep it um, relatively easy. Do you know? Did you work at? Uh, did you know any Roblox AI can take? Because I ran out of it. There's a limit on the Roblox AI. I didn't know that. Um, for the most part, though, I think, you know, ChatGPT can answer most of those questions pretty well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear, Wolf. Hope you feel better tomorrow. Yeah, it's, uh, growing up's tough, you know. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of scars get built up when you're still figuring things out. Um, what are, what are uh, the scripting AI? Well, I think at the, for the most part, the scripting AI represents 
Um, you know, I personally prefer using ChatGPT to ask questions rather than just going with the code it provides. Um, but that's because I kind of know what I'm doing for the most part. Like, and I can uh, I can fill in the blanks a lot better than it can for now, at least. Um, I think that AI assisted tooling is only going to become more and more popular. I think the one for Roblox specifically is it will get you something that functions. It will not get you something that scales. I think that's the hard part. Like, you could probably make Superhero Life 2, or definitely Superhero Life 1, with, um, but like Roblox Luau has not changed too much. Like, that you should not be using a, 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 a uh, an AI model to get the most up-to-date API. I think that for the most part, ChatGPT, whenever I handle a Roblox problem, it's usually, like usually when I'm using ChatGPT for Roblox code, it's because it's like a very specific algorithm I want to translate into Lua. Um, yeah, but like, it's just not a, I think that there is still value in learning to program. And I think there will be uh, for a long time to come. I think that being a junior dev is not necessarily recommended, but I do think that we're kind of going to see a, uh, with AI, you're going to have smaller and smaller teams able to do it more and more. And so the question is, how do you get into that increasingly competitive space? And also, does it need to be increasingly competitive? In a world where more and more people can just do some coding stuff, um, does that translate into more useful things? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I th my gut says no, honestly. I don't know if, um, if, if, if we're destined to have the market proportionally grow with the, uh, proportionally grow with like, you know, access, but one can help, you know? All right, so this is going OK. Um, okay, so I'm just moving with that. Yeah, like, here's, here's the thing when it comes to uh, game development. There's a lot of... I, th I think that for a game developer to really succeed as a game programmer, you have to get a feel for how an entire game's systems need to work. Like, if I'm making an open world game, I know from the start that my biggest problem will be performance and filling up all that empty space with something interesting. And I don't know if an AI will be able to, um, like, they, I don't know if an AI will be able to recognize, like, if you ask it, hey, what, what should I consider when making a big map? It'll tell you performance, because people have written about performance. But, like, I don't know if it will necessarily remember at all times when it's making code, oh, yeah, this needs to be performant. This needs to, uh, I, can't, I can't do it this, the easy way. Like, um, for example, you could have... But one thing that the Roblox AI does really regularly is it does not give a crap about uh, Roblox connect connections. When you connect an event, it actually returns something called a Roblox connection, which you have to disconnect once you're done. And, you know, it's a form of memory leak if it doesn't get disconnected. And Roblox AI seems to almost always forget this. And so if you hook up, say, if you make a thousand different, uh, you know, houses, and you want to open the door with a little touchpad in the front, and you hook up a thousand different connections, um, when the house loads in, um, you know, it, it it'll try, it, and it just gives you code for like hooking up the house. It will then uh, just 
it'll it'll make that mistake because you've told it, all right, we want to hook up functionality to this house, but it's forgotten. It needs to be hooked up in a way which scales for such a massive thing. And then say you want to change the code, like say that your design changes. Uh, if you don't understand the code, you're going to have to ask the AI, hey, can you change this code for me? And the AI, once again, may not remember um, what exactly it is meant to do. Like it might hallucinate things that don't exist. It might forget things that do. And even even as we get better AI with bigger context windows, um, like there's just going to be uh, some friction. I'm of the mind that eventually AI will take over a lot of the process. I, I really don't think that this is the safest industry to get into, but for like, I think that for a long time, the best human programmers will be much more desirable to hire than a decent AI. I think that you're going to lose, um, it's going to go the way of programming is going to go the way of graphic design, where for the most part, ever since like Microsoft Paint came out, uh, nobody really needs to do graphic design. Like you can hire one if you are feeling professional, but if you have just like a small store, you know, put Comic Sans, make some nice colors, it's fine. You know, like it allowed someone to do it at a very local level. But a company is not just like this, like Roblox, when they release marketing material, they're not doing it. Like, like the CEO is not sitting down and opening up Microsoft Paint. Um, you know, they, they go and um, have a professional who has spent their entire life training on getting good at this. And I think that, you know, that's not going to necessarily go away. I think that you want to hire the best. And while an AI can do increasingly large amounts of stuff at low cost for situations where cost doesn't matter as much as quality, um, I think that those jobs will be the last ones to go away. Um, oh, uh, music AI? Uh, so let's see. Uh, there, I am open. Oh, so mini games are a fun idea, but. The problem with mini games is that they don't necessarily like nobody really uh, plays the game for them for the most part. Like if a mini game is fun enough to, for people to play the game, it should be its own game, you know. Like um, I think that for the most part, I, I prefer mini games to sort of build off the overall um, the overall gameplay. And uh, with that in mind, it's just a uh, what's it called? I think that mini games, for the most part, just they take up a lot of developer time and just don't reward in the same way that like a new power would. It's kind of like, uh, what will get you more fun? A adding a new piece to a chessboard, like a fully new type, like one that has special moves. Uh, see ya, hee hee. Uh, the thank you for stopping by. Uh, if you add a new piece to a chessboard. Every strategy you have now has to change to fit in that new piece. You basically have to relearn chess because the situation has changed. Um, and I think for, as a result, like you get sort of like an exponential effect on the player experience, which is a single new piece. Um, like think about how much uh, the castling changed uh, the chess strategy. Um, and so as a result, let the, now compare that to say having a chessboard and then also putting your tic-tac-toe next to it. You'll get maybe a few minutes out of tic-tac-toe, and then so like it only add time. It won't exponentially like improve or, or change the the situation. And so I think really you want to integrate with existing game systems whenever you consider a mechanic. Um, the music AI. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that I really do like the music AI of the voice synthesis stuff. I think it works the best when you have a human sing something as a cover and then sort of use it as a filter to change it to another person's voice. From what I can tell, that's where you get some of the best results. Um, but it's like it's very cool. Like I, I, um, I know there was that one Drake song which everyone liked. And, you know, I, I'm not like a huge Drake fan, but that did sound like the stuff I hear him make. You know. Um, I think that 
it's a shame, I feel, that a lot of artists are kind of apprehensive to AI, which I understand. Like, there, there is certainly going to be damage done on the music industry. So I guess I can understand why they don't want to jump for it. But, like, I don't know. It's cool. It, there's some that I, I, I like some of the stuff that people make with it. Um, I don't usually listen to things that are just fully generated because that, I don't know, I don't think that sounds good. But like if it sounds good, I don't know, I, it's kind of like a, uh, if you can't tell the difference, I don't know, I, I think that when you like, uh, I think that we should look at AI art kind of like we look at the ocean or a, a beautiful scene in a forest. Like, you didn't, like, nobody made this room, um, except for the artists who I hope were fairly compensated for being in the training data. Um, though also, anyone saying that that's the end of the problem, if you just make it so that all, um, if you make it so that everything has to be owned, uh, that does just mean only Disney has an AI. Like, I, I, don't, I think we have to have a more nuanced solution, hopefully. Um, like, honestly, one idea which I would love is that anything AI generated uh, just can't be commercially sold on its own. You know, like, if you make <clears throat> an AI song, um, no, you shouldn't be able to sell that AI song. Um, or if you do, it should go, there should be some way to determine what proportionality is by, um, you know, the people whose training data was used. Like. I think that there's there's got to be a way, you know, for 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 that to happen. Um, but I think that for the most part, like having some, if you use it as like background music in a game or texture a single asset in it with an AI thing, which I think I used uh, an AI generated texture for a conveyor belt because I looked around and I couldn't find any conveyor belt textures to uh, not even in like purchasable form like I just couldn't find anything and so I I generated one and like it worked I, I think that like at the end of the day you know sure I could have maybe custom hired um, an artist to make me a conveyor belt texture but also it wasn't an important conveyor belt I would have just uh, you know I, I would have just not used it if I, if it, if I had to hire someone for it Hey, welcome, Will. <laughs> uh, we we have a a, a very talented uh, wordsmith um, in 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 the chat with us today. Uh, yeah, the when you work at a game company, you work with a lot of people, and the people who help all those people work together, are, those are the true magicians. Uh, right now, we're talking about um, you know AI and game development, and uh, you know. And how like AI music is getting kind of weird, but yeah, like you know, at the end of the day, I I'd like to think of it as an instrument, and hopefully you know one that can be ethically sourced. Uh, but yeah, the uh, mm -hmm. yeah, let's see, you can do a playground in a park if not by the school. Uh, once again, the playgrounds, I, I like the idea from a sense of like, there should be a playground, like a public park somewhere at the playground. Like, we have so much space right here. We should have like a public park, you know? Like, that makes sense. Problem is, the second I had a park, it's like, okay, now they have to sit on the swings. The swing phase kind of got to work. Um, the, uh, then you have situations where, uh, what's, what's the phrase? My brain's fried, sorry. Um, then we have situations where the actual, um, where the slides, like especially when you have people of different sizes. I don't know about y'all, I can't fit on a slide anymore, and I'm not even the Hulk. I'm just a normal, well, slightly taller than average person, you know? And I think that at the same time, like, it just, it, it's just a lot of interactions that I think um, you, like, I don't want people to be disappointed. Have you ever gone in a video game and gone up to a door only to realize it's a fake door? That's a horrible feeling. And I feel like when people expect a direction, like shooting a red barrel and it doesn't explode, like you kind of mislead the player. 
Um, what is the fave game that I've made? Uh, Night Ships. Um, it never finished or came out, uh, but it was probably the coolest thing I ever made. I could do it better now, but as I said, you know, a lot of stuff I need to do. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, like you want the whole point of video games. If you just want to look at something cool and not interact with it, uh, that's animation, that's movies, that's acting, filming, like that's that's a whole separate media that you can do. There are so many media which you cannot change. In fact, that's, I'd say, the standard. Um, video games are a media where you're part of it. You are part of the interaction. And as a result, I'd say that the different, um, that like it has a whole different set of priorities. And one of those is immersion. I think even when you're not making like a role play game, there's, you still got to set up that, uh, that feel you want. The, the way it was best described to me was by, uh, in a book by Steve Swing. I think I have it up there, um, but I'm not going to stand up and get it right now. Um, the, it was a book by Steve Swink about, um, and he referenced the idea of when you drive a car, it feels like you're, you're, you are the car to an extent. Like when someone hits a, a car that you're driving, you say, they hit me. You know, like you don't say they hit my car with their car. Like it becomes part of you to an extent. It responds to your reflexes. It's like another limb. And I think good game development feels like that. Um, and good, like sorry, good game mechanics feel like that. And uh, so anything that sort of breaks immersion, anything that sort of reminds you that you can't do this, um, it almost feels like a phantom limb or something. Where like you, your brain sends the signal, open the door, but then the game tells you you cannot open the door. You know, like like go down the slide. Game tells you you can't go down the slide. Like it just, I, it's a bad feeling. And I think for the most part, there are just some areas that. Uh, you, you got to be careful with Like, if I'm adding a slide, it has to be a functional one. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I've made the game a little bit worse by trying to make it better. Um, like Gabe Newell said, they wanted to uh, the game to feel like it was reacting to player. Yes, yes, yeah, no. I think a good game should be unique to the player. Like... I have watched many movies and TV shows, and there's something to be said that watching a movie with friends or family or different audiences can make it more compelling. Like, it can be exciting, you know? Um, but it's still fundamentally a very similar movie. Like, there's a reason HBO works as a streaming service, because, yeah, a theater experience is good, but like most people, when they when they're asked about it, uh, are fine watching at home. You know, like, okay, rule of thumb: if your video game can be best enjoyed as a string of cutscenes on a, in a YouTube video, like a like just like uh, just all the cinematics stitched together, as like ever seen like in like the any Uncharted game, honestly. <laughs> Naughty Dog does this a lot. The, it's very frustrating because you can tell the Naughty Dog developers are horribly talented. Just unfairly talented. And it is being wasted in what could have been a movie. Like, yeah, you can have that kind of game feel interactions, and those feel great. But all of the inter engagements you have with the, the, the game itself are, you know, I, it almost like they kind of like take that sort of like movie theater venue approach to. Uh, to the game where it's like yeah watching a movie in a in a theater can make it feel better and yeah controlling nathan drake can make it feel better um but that's not the main draw of it the main draw is the story itself and by making the story a video game i think that it really does limit um it limits things because on the one hand if you're invested in the story all of a sudden you'll like lose you you'll, you'll like get shot, and all of a sudden, like you have to like be like that didn't happen, you know, like, like it kind of messes with the flow of the story um, when your actions, uh, you know, can cause fail states, and especially when the when the story itself doesn't uh, react to it. I I have mixed feelings on Detroit Become Human. I really liked it when I first played it, but 
since then, you know, some of, some of it hasn't uh, aged very well. I think because the thing I really liked about it was the branching story. I think that if you have a story game, at the very least it needs to be branching. You cannot do a linear story game that, that is like, which is about the story, you know? And I think that that is such just a, um, such a missed opportunity. Whenever I see a Naughty Dog game, it feels like someone describing a painting in like a book. Like, yeah, you can get the point across, but it would be better to show a picture. Then you'd actually see it. Then you'd actually experience it. Like, I think that uh, the reason The Last of Us was such a good TV show is because it, it almost always should have been one, you know? Like, like the, the fact it was a game uh, was, was the issue. And I don't know. I, I think that a video game should be about the interactivity. It should be about when you play a video game, um, it should be, it, you should have your fingerprint so clearly on it. You, it, it should be something very unique to you. Like, um, I think that a good example of this is, uh, you can see a lot of sandbox games. Like, uh, I enjoy watching uh, City Skylines, and uh, uh, that's probably the biggest one, but some teardown stuff as well. Just I like watching gameplay from that because you'll see people interact with the game you know and do things that you wouldn't have thought of. Like they've made it, that's their city. They've made it their game. Um, and even if you, uh, and sometimes to the detriment, there's this, uh, there is this one um, channel where they take this game called Besiege and make it like a military flight simulator <laughs> with like mods and stuff and it looks so fun when they do it but it's got to be a lot of editing magic because every time i tried to get it running it just would not feel fun it would run it would uh, run very slowly feel very clunky it just wasn't fun because a video game being fun requires a fun player like like, you, you have to be able... Like, the, the game can't make fun of its own. And, you know, you, I, I guess humans can make fun of their own. That's how we keep reinventing soccer and stuff. But, like, we, I think we can all agree that video games are an excellent tool for people to create fun. But the person is the key ingredient. We might see a day where AIs generate video games. I don't think we'll see a day where the well actually ai is playing them does exist because of bots and market incentives and cheating and uh, okay but that's not the point nobody's ever going to make a video game so that bots can play them and at least i hope not i think that the game experience is fun because of what you do with it um but no like and also it's okay if you guys like uncharted I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm saying that I disagree with the creative direction they took with it. Well, actually, I am saying it's a bad game. I think it's a good story. I think it's a good, it's a good experience. I think that it is handicapped by their decision to make it a video game. It's kind of like how... Uh, here's another interesting story uh, of the... of a. Wait, it's not a Blizzard uh, Overwatch. Y'all ever see the Overwatch cinematics? Those look great. And I think that they do a good job with that because you're not playing like Genshi's story mode. You get the story as a cinematic because that's what it is. It's a story. It is meant to fill you in with the world. Um, but the game itself is not about a story. It's about, you know, fighting. Like, uh, and I think that they, I, I, I feel much happier with um, Overwatch's approach to storytelling, where they, they, they use the appropriate medium for telling, for, for their, their chosen uh, story, for their chosen goal. And now, when you play as the character, you understand their backstory. It feels cooler because of it. But the gameplay itself isn't held back. Just my, that's just my point. Um, when you start focusing on the interiors, will the school, school be two floors? Um, maybe. 
in terms of interiors, my goal here is not to like make a full like one to one like like you would not be able to look at every single one of these windows. That's just not a good use of time. Hey, happy birthday to Gaming Zone. Um, let's see the yeah no uh, happy birthday uh, the uh, but yeah like if I filled this map with every single bit of it with content um, I think that if it was unique content that'd be one thing. But there's diminishing returns. OK, let's say that I filled every single room here. We'd have like one for every classroom. Uh, and then like, let's say, which would you all rather have? If I spend three hours, would you rather me put like a bioreactor in Syndicorp or like a study hall room, you know? like? There's a list of, of cool ideas, and you got to do them in order. And I think that for the most part, the school cool places are like a cafeteria, a gym, a classroom, the principal's office. And then like everything else uh, is kind of just spins on that. Like if we're just trying to fill things, like in order, I'm not like obviously having like a chemistry room and an English room and like all that stuff, that's cool and good to have, but we are working. But we don't have an infinite time budget here. We have to make decisions with what time we have available. And I think that, yeah, a bioreactor would be a better use of the time for this kind of game. Um, let's see. We are. Okay, uh, we're almost there, we almost, it's crazy how as I talk, my uh, brain's ability to actually do anything useful just goes away. And that's how we got superhero life too. Uh, the, let's see, I reckon the corporation jack floors. Yeah, no, I, I think that um, I think that definitely having different you want to use the space inside intelligently. Like you want to you don't want everything to just be on one floor necessarily. In fact, I think that you know having sort of a main hall in the school would be kind of nice. It's just um, you know you actually have to go through and make that. We'll see. I I would like to have like the cafeteria main hall combo. Honestly, I think Super, you know the game, I think, had the best school interior? If I remember correctly, I think it might be Super Hero, like, one. I really liked that interior. Um, that was, uh, it, I, th I felt that it was, it did, it, it had the right amount of, uh, it, it felt the, decorated correctly, if that makes any sense. Like, it, it didn't feel empty. I think the Super Hero Life 3 one, it felt bigger, but also emptier. Um, whereas the Superhero Life 2 one, it just didn't have much in it. Um, and so I think the Superhero Life 1 was like, actually felt like a nice balance. So we want to take some of that energy, some of that vibe. Okay, so we have all of these. What to do, what to do. gonna you know, go through and um, build these out. I can smell Yanni is cooking something delicious. Uh, the <laughs> no I yeah I uh, it was um superhero life one taking off like it did was, was an amazing thing for me to watch. I I very much uh, I felt like the king of the world that day. Um, 
Okay, so what's a good Right, so let, let's actually use the uh, resize align here. Extend. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, that's not right. Uh, okay, how do I do this? Extend into. Extend into. Okay, that kind of worked. All right, yay, I did it. We're gonna have to do some, uh, be a bit more creative with how we decorate the different um, interiors because there's just too much stuff here right now. You know, like we, I think we should make it so at the end of each pier kind of has some space, you know. Sorry to hear about the betrayal, uh, Joy. I hope that your friend is okay. Um, though, I, I guess that would help with the betrayal. Um, oh, uh, so as to the uh, chest life uh, detail, um, I want to get... So chest life, we're not going to be able to do that level of detail exactly because that game had like full interiors. Like every single building had an interior, essentially. Um, we're not going to be able to do that. I think that we're going to be able to get sort of the outside quality. I think that the you know the view the the quality it had on the outside um, that that will work for interiors. Though we're going to have less interiors than that game, just just for the sake of form. So we cannot avoid that. Um, I think yeah, as to superhero life. Um, Superhero Life Three is an oddball. Uh, yes, yes, I, I, I can see why people feel that way. I think it marked a difference in my philosophy as a developer, one which I've come to change my mind on, um, and that is the role of the developer. I think in Superhero Life, as you guys know, uh, the quest system in Superhero Life Two is stupid. It's boring. Like, it'll give you maybe a few minutes of fun, but for the most part, nobody really deals with that quest system for very long. It's the character creator that's fun. Um, that's what everybody loves. And uh, I think that for the most part, that is um, anyone who likes the game likes it for the character creator. So the thing is, I don't think anyone has a problem with me making the character creator uh, better, you know? Sorry, the, the, the uh, quest system better. Um, I hope nobody has problem making the character creator better. Um, but I think that at the end of the day, the fun in the character creator comes from y'all. It is fun because y'all make something cool out of it. It is a mechanic. It is. It's like that thing I was talking about earlier, where it's like the, a good game. Your experience with it is unique, and I think that with Superhero Life Three. I wanted to capture that sort of unique feeling for things other than the character creator. I wanted it to be a full superhero experience, not just one of uh, not not just one for the for the actual character creator. I wanted to feel like I wanted to have action. I wanted to have uh, you know uh, a, a secret identity jobs like. I remember taking a lot of inspiration from Jailbreak because I felt that Jailbreak did a good job making that kind of gameplay 
uh, feel compelling and unique. Like how you escaped jail with your friends is uh, is fun. That's fun in a, in, like a, in a sort of way that you can talk about. Like uh, that that um, like like you can say like oh that time that we uh, snuck out and got and got everyone out in the middle of the night by uh, having one person distract the others. Like you know like that's there's fun gameplay. Um, and I wanted that to be Superhero Life 3, and instead of, but unfortunately, I was just not as good of a developer as the Jailbreak developers. They they had did a much better job making that game. And so what I did was I refocused my efforts in the area I was just weaker in. And so the philosophy of it being more about the actual adventures you get to as a superhero rather than the creation of the superhero, um, that backfired. And I think that that really hurt uh, Superhero Life 3. Um, for my vision for Superhero Life 4, I think it's a little bit more of a, uh, the, the types of, I, it is much more of a balanced view. I still think that the game is more fun when you can do fun things as your character. I don't think anyone's against that. But I also think that it should not come at the, uh, at the cost of the character creation. That that should not take a backseat. That is that is the main cool fun thing about superhero life. Um, I wish, you know, that I'd known or recognized that uh, before I made Superhero Life uh, 3. But if I hadn't made Superhero Life 3 the way I did, I don't think I would have been able to recognize the stuff whole. Like the problem is whenever I make a superhero life game, I'm making it with the best of my ability. I'm never taking shortcuts. I'm making strategies as to how to best, um, how to best create this game, a good game on a limited time budget. And because people, that's the, the thing which frustrates me the most is people will say um, superhero life three was rushed. It was not. It took longer than superhero life two. It's just the scope increased more than the time, and so. The quality dipped, but the the game itself actually took more work. It's just it, it didn't pay off. It didn't feel better, and so that's part of the reason why um, you know I'm putting so much effort into making Superhero Life uh, 2's remake. You know, making that really uh, work because I think the community deserves a fun game. Um, and I, I hope I hope I can be the one to give it. Um, you know the uh, yeah. I mean, like people did have expectations for it, but it it's just kind of hazy looking back, honestly. The because there were people who didn't like the suit creator. That was true from like day one. But a lot of the sentiment around Superhero Life, people were still very much excited and liked it from all the internal testing. Like, people were happy with the game for the most part. That just didn't translate to the full release. And I think that's what kind of blindsided me. I didn't expect people to dislike the game that much. Um, but hey, you know. Now, now that that's how you learn when you do play testing you try to break out of just your base audience and that they will always be more optimistic than the than the average player um, you yeah. know it's an important lesson hopefully when I don't have to learn again it's like every like every time I release a game it's just like that one fish from SpongeBob like how many times do we have to keep teaching you this lesson old man it's just I don't know, till, till it sticks. And hopefully it has this time. We'll make a fun superhero life game. Okay. That's looking better. I'm going to... Yeah, fill, no, resize one, that was it.
There we go. Um, let's see. Okay, that's looking all right. Um, let's go back and group these buildings up. We could we could have another combo that we make here, you know. Let me uh, let me do that. Remember a while back in view. Uh, yeah, no, I, I yeah I remember. Uh, yeah, the, the the period of time where people were playing uh, Superhero Life Two on YouTube was great. I, I loved getting to watch people uh, make that stuff. The thing which surprised me the most was probably the machinima, um, the 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 people making their own like little movies in it. Uh, that was that was very fun to to see happen in real time. Um, okay, I think that is it's okay. Isn't it? All right. Um, let's uh, before I actually do too much more. Um, let me. First, let's actually take these different models and put it under the uh, mall buildings area. Building gray boxes, model container. Um, where's the dock at? There we go. Dock. Um, more buildings here. All right. Um, let's see. Um, so what do your devs uh, work on? I don't really have any devs. It's just me for the most part. Uh, sometimes uh, Ryan, and the, uh, Ryan, uh, the guy who did a lot of the uh, art in Superhero 3, and is a very talented artist. Um, I think that... Let's see. Let's also... Okay, I'm going to press... Uh, I'm gonna press but let's, get, let's get a feel for this um, at a person scale. Um... Yeah, no, I, I know it's for, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with working with people, but I need to trust them and, you know, think very highly of them. And there are many people who I think highly of, and there are many people I trust. And a lot of the people who I think highly love of and trust are just so talented that they're never available, you know? Um, okay, this feels nice. This actually feels better than I was expecting. Like, I, I always get worried that stuff's going to feel too big when I make these city maps, but this actually feels like a good scale, you know? Like, that's a that's just, I don't know how to explain it. It just feels like this is like a, this isn't too big. I think a lot of things in Superhero Life 3 just felt too big. And, um, you know. Okay, that, like, this feels all right. Um... Yeah, the, uh, let's see, what is opinions on Helix Ascent? I don't think I played it too much. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't, like, do too much, like, uh, like, competitor research. I know a lot of people like it, and if they like it, I assume there's good reasons for them to like it. But at the end of the day, I mostly just rely on my audience to tell me what they want in the game, rather than going out and trying to, you know, figure out what works. It's kind of like, I guess I like to think of like being a chef. I'm, I've made a really good um, chocolate cake and then people are telling me how much they really love uh, pizza. Uh, like, and I go over and see they use cheese and pizza and then I, you know, if I, if I put cheese in my chocolate cake, that's going to taste bad. So, you know, got to stick to, uh, you got to mess with the recipe you have, not 
uh, not the one that other people are using. Um, let's see. Yeah, the uh, why did I pay for the customization in Superhero? Oh, it's because I wanted to monetize it. But that's the thing. Like, it's not a secret. I, I, this these games take a lot of effort, and there's also a lot, a ton of effort um, between making games. Like for the projects, like when when, when y'all buy something in Superhero Life, you're not just buying the effort I put into that game, you're also buying the time I put to get good enough to make that game. And that's why um, that, 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 that's why you know you gotta monetize because you put in a lot of hard work to get here. Um, and I appreciate everyone who pays it and I so I, I appreciate everyone who just plays it. Like not everyone has the available money and uh, not everyone thinks it's worth the money they have. But the people who do I really appreciate it and I want to make the game better for everyone. Um, and I think that's where Superhero Life 3 failed. The monetization did not make the game better for everyone. It made the game worse for some and playable for others. And I think that that was its main failing. And I want to help to remedy in the remake. This does feel good. I, I like this. This, uh... Yeah, no, th th this is feeling good. Uh, so I I will have game passes most likely. The thing is, I also like doing everything with in-game currency. I will not make customization an in-game currency thing. I really won't. I swear. Customization is not in-game currency thing. Um, at least character customization. Uh, if it, if you can do it for free in Superhero Life Two, you'll be able to do it for free in all Superhero Life games. That is my goal. Um, I want to really flesh out um, the character creator. I think that other things like based customization and you know um, that's really where where we are going to see uh, some improvements. Um, yeah, like I think that based customization that'll be where you monetize. Maybe vehicle customization eventually. Um, like, but we want the character itself to feel like at the end of the day, you don't have to pay money to be yourself, you know, and that's uh, and I think that that's what we want to allow for people to sort of make their own uh, avatar, their, their own digital identity. And um, yeah, I think that that, that that should not be something that uh, is charged for. I think that that really hampers the uh, overall experience. Why is it? Okay. No, I'm, ju I'm just trying to get the uh, resizing to extend up to. Okay, that's better. Um, but yeah. Uh, path materials, normal concrete, um, like the sidewalks. I don't know. I, I like the sidewalks out of out of concrete tiles. Are we talking about the stairs? I I, you know, I I can see it for the stairs, but I don't know. I feel like the overall um, thing. Uh, let, let's see what we can do with the stairs. And even then, maybe it's just like a uh, we increase the texture size for the concrete. Sidewalk? I don't know. I I like the sidewalk right now. I, I think it'll look better when we have stuff on it, but like this is what a sidewalk looks like. I don't know. I you y'all will have to uh you know if, if if the sidewalk really does need redoing, that's gonna take that, that's gonna be something you'll talk me into for for uh, you know across a few streams because I don't, I don't. I'm not. I'm not feeling that. I. I think the sidewalks look really good. Um. Let's see. I just to match the color of it. Looks 
looks okay. Um, it needs to be like a slight, like a yellowish or something, you know? Just a little bit of like, there's something there, you know? It's just a little bit of something, a little grime. It's close enough. Oh uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely think the private server system will be getting a bunch of updates to like that's another way to monetize. Um, you know, just giving more control over the server. Like I I want I want everything because the thing is like I'm giving away the best part of the game for free. And so that means everything else is gonna have to monetize, you know. Like um the Okay, so let's let's decide on some. Oh, except for the powers, because I want the combat to still. Well, what to do about the five game, the five power game pass? Did I do that in Superhero Life uh, Three as well? Did I did I do that? Does anyone? Uh, let's check. Does it does it depress you to, to when 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 you realize I don't actually remember my own games? That yeah, well, does that, does that cause pain? Um, okay, so superhero life game passes. I know, I know, you can't see the screen. I'm sorry. Advanced role play, double save slots, extra power. I did. It's the most expensive one too. I don't know. I'm torn on that one. On the one hand, like as I said. The customization, that's the part that's good. I don't know. It, it's the, and I'm giving that power away for free, but our power is part of the customization, you know? Like, or is specifically having four powers of the same ones available to everyone else. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. I. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. But we'll see. It might just be a thing where it's like it I will be going back and forth on that for a long time. Because on the one hand, it's earned a decent amount. And like people don't complain about the extra powers too much. Like I'm not even sure they really give you a strategic advantage so much as they just allow you to have the powers that you want, you know? And I'd actually be curious if, if I did like analytics, like how much other, having other powers, like maybe actually wait, maybe that should be kind of thing where you have um, only a certain amount of power and you like divide it among the powers you have, like you have almost so much like energy, like especially the energy system in Superhero Life 2, like that, um, well, we're gonna do a better job with that. And so maybe, the people who have like multiple powers doesn't necessarily mean they're stronger. It just means they can kind of do a extra special type of customization. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So I'm seeing some colors here. I like that. I like that. That's a bright color. I like that kind of wavy texture. Is that just the Roblox sand texture? Yeah. Um, Maybe. I don't know. What? Let's uh, let's start by just getting the getting the cool ones. Um, wood planks. All right, cool. Little. How what color was that one? Just, I used to look so much better when they do it. Looks alright. Um, probably like an ocean blue. I 
should make I should get the material to uh, wet planks first. Ocean man. Let's see. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm making. A, I've made a lot of progress with the dock. Um, we're going to have to. Uh, the actual storefronts. We're going to have to save that for um, later on. But you know, for the most part, um, let, is there a good Ferris wheel mesh? Is that is that a thing? Let's see. So I would love to actually have like a mesh there, um, you know, Ferris, okay, I'll just wheel. Perfect. Control shift. <laughs> I'm joking. This this does not look great. Um, Is there like a wooden spiked wheel, you know? Like like one of those ones you see on like a carriage? I think the refinery came out looking really good. Um, yeah, we're we're just we're trying to make all of these areas feel special in their own way. So honestly, I'm actually really liking the dock. Like I know that's not you know the, it's going to be nobody's favorite, um, but I like it. Uh, I, I think it looks really good. Like just like just like the sort of it sinking in, and like having like the different like stair routes to it. I think that looks good. Um, but yeah, we're at the 25 minute mark. Um, so I will be improving this game over time, but you know, I also have to start working on Superhero Life 3. Like, there's, there's only so much, uh, you know, like only so much uh, time available. But yeah, so I, I do plan on updating this, you know, a lot more than it used to get updated. But many of those updates will be sort of like things that are given across the Superhero Life games rather than... Um, you know, we're going to have new content, especially based on how people are playing. But the specific, uh, oh, uh, will it be improved lighting? Uh, yes. Yes, there will. Um, probably. I mean, like, I'm better at setting up lighting now. So, it's going to be an improvement. I don't know if it's going to use future. That depends on performance, but future would be nice. Would there be more stuff in the park? Yes, yes. We're gonna. We haven't decorated the park yet. We're really just doing the, um, just trying to get the coastline, pier, area working. Um, okay. So how about let us? Where's that little? There it is. Okay.
kind of like this shape. You know? Let's see. Uh, I believe it was, uh, who was it who loved materials? Was it you, Wolf? Well, oh yeah, uh, thank you all for stopping by why this happened. Uh, yeah, uh, a forest would be good. Airports are probably never going to be in superhero life just because they're so space inefficient. Um, you might get like a train station or something, but for the most part, uh, yeah, no, we're, we're not, we're not doing airports. I'm sorry. Um, Should be good for like a bathroom, a shower or something. Yeah. Let's see. Well, yeah, we, we we have some uh, some fun materials. Um. Okay, guys, we can agree. This is very cool, and I want to use it somewhere. I want to use this in like the. Uh, I want to use this in in the uh, in the garden and the park. Okay, we're gonna, we all agree we're going to use this. We're going to use this at some point. Sweet. Okay, you all remember that for me. Welcome back. Hey, hey, uh, can, thank you for stopping by to 15 minutes, Silent Sparrow. Uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, the, uh, we're, right now we're just we're, we're messing around with a roof texture, having blocked out all of this. We're just, you know, we're, we're trying to um, find some good, some good, uh, you know, materials for this. Did something happen to the materials? I could have sworn we had a lot of metal ones. There we go. It just wasn't showing up for some reason. Okay, so stone. We have some brick options. Uh, some good stone building too. Okay, so wood. Let's try some wood stuff. Ooh. Okay. There's so many there's so many good wood textures. Goodness, they all look just beautiful. Um we need something that kind of looks like you something you do for a roof though. Okay. I like this wood texture. I really do. I almost wonder if I should be using something like that for the uh, for the walls, you know? The problem is some of the best textures just have a very specific color. And since we can't really recolor that, we're kind of stuck either using it for only one color or, um, yeah, the, 
Yeah, that's the that's the uh, Ferris wheel. Yep. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna have a Ferris wheel. That's gonna that's gonna lead to some fun stuff. Okay. All right. So how about let's just go and. We're gonna we're gonna replace that with something. I promise. Thank you. Yeah. The uh... Uh, let's go to something metal. Let's see, maybe, maybe a metal roof. Ooh. Y'all just know this is going in the character editor, right? Like, there's no way we don't have this in the character editor. That's so cool. Still pretty cool. Um, another good one. Uh, I Sewer systems are cool. I want to have them. It's just always been like a... Um, it's just always been sort of a low priority thing to add. Just because there's so many above ground things that I need to get to, um, that adding an underground just, you know, that's always a, uh, always takes time. Do I really not have any good roof tile materials? Is this what I'm learning? <sighs> Thousands of materials. Not a single one of them looks good on a roof. We're gonna have to use these in like the newsroom. That'll be that'll be handy. Problem is these look really cool, and it's just like but I can't use them here. Also, in case anyone's wondering why I'm not using this one, which is actually a roof texture, um, it's because of the leaves, and I don't want it to be season specific. And also, it, it, it's colored. These are some gross ones, but you just know they're gonna go. This is what y'all are gonna use for your Shrek recreations. <laughs> this is Shrek skin. Um. Uh, it really is just that one tile. Okay. This one's annoying because I actually think this one could work. Um, it's just a very specific color. It's also very plasticky. How many textures would there be in the character editor? Uh, no specific limit, but I mean we're gonna have them because they're very cool. Um, let's see. Red. Come on, give me one. This is the worst. Okay, okay, that, this actually, if, if it just, if it wasn't green, you know, um, let's see, let's, 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 let, uh, but it does give me hope for the metal ones, you know, So that looks good. Um, no, no, man, it is. I feel like I had so much momentum, and then I just got stuck on this, and now this is my life. You know, like 
I thought that we were doing something. We were accomplishing things. We had 25 minutes left. Now we have 10, and I'm here picking through a billion materials, trying to find one which I can use for a roof. Okay, that doesn't look bad. Doesn't look great either. Yeah, oh, ooh. That actually is an amazing rusted texture. Okay, this. Like this is the this is okay. When I tell y'all that I hate corroded metal, this is what corroded metal should be, you know. And, and just for a reminder, uh, this is what it actually looks like. Yeah. This is corroded metal. This is metal that is experiencing some degree of corrosion. All right, let us. Uh, We'll just copy that for now. Okay, uh, so let's let's go through and add it to some more things. Uh, I think you have updating Super Hero 2 constantly after, not constantly, but I will update it regularly. My hope is um, I want to get at least one update in per quarter for like, you know, the rest of my life. Um, but I don't, like the thing is like, it, it's just um, what will make more sense at that point, that I should keep on working on that or should I, uh, you know, move on to, um, should I move on to Super Hero Life 3? Like it just becomes a uh, you know a bit of a I'd say a, a tough thing to navigate for the most part. Okay. Where is that one? Where are you? Sets per tile. Okay, I'm just removing that stupid package link. Okay. Um, all right. We, we are going to start accepting uh, more roof varieties. Okay, so now um, let's go back to Toolbox, though. There are some other good roofs. What's this one? Let's see if we can do like a thatched roof. Is that that's on video? Yeah, that looks okay. That's not, it's not thatched. That looks also okay. <laughs> this made of watermelon. Um, Let's, um, okay, I'm also going to, what goes good with a green roof? 
It's gotta be like a maybe like a reddish, darkish red. Like that, that looks okay. Um, when you when you do the mall, uh, this is the mall, essentially. Uh, the, yeah, so this is this is what the mall is turning into. Um, Yeah, the uh, yeah we're, we're we're having an outdoor mall. Um, the thinking is, you know, this is still a place where people socialize, hang out, and buy stuff. Except it actually, you know, has to deal is is a bit more easy to incorporate into other gameplay. You know, like like if you're running from someone and you run through the mall, this is easier to run through. You know. All right. See you, silent. Um. Let's see. The yeah no I I definitely want to have food places um, out here you know I think I think that that would be a good good way to uh, do that let's make this kind of an orangish okay kind of a copper that's a bit too. Okay, let's uh let's see what other any other good roofs um around with uh, these different roof styles. Um, oh yeah, let, let's um, These ones have again. It's just kind of a tile. Okay, let's let's take a second of the tiles. Come on, tiles. Tile. Come on. Come on. Just too obviously bricks. I like this material. This kind of brick material is very cool. Okay. Okay. This one. This will do. Oh, but I. Oh, that 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 texture. Okay. Wait. Let's. Uh. What happened to? What happened to one of those giant ones? Okay. Let's try it on this. Um,
Ew, it's so ugly. Okay. We, uh... Mission failed. Whatever happened to night ships? Same thing that happens with most of my projects. Out of scope. Unfortunately. I have a, an imagination bigger than my budget. And that continues to be my downfall. Um... Okay. Yeah, let's, uh, I mean, like, for the most part, we're not, like, we're not, we can consider this more or less done, you know, like, we, it's not great, but, like, we could do some, uh, some stuff here, just, <sighs> because we gotta, we gotta move on, you know, we gotta move on to the next day, this is, we can't have this take forever, um, we'll just, Buy some random colors. You know. Okay. Yeah. Like, well, we'll 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 flesh these out over time, but for the most part, like, you know, we're we're getting the general idea of of what this area will look like for the most part, you know. Okay. Well, it looks like we're at the twenty nine mark. So, you know, only only so much time left. Uh, any last words? Um, as to what the GUI looks like, uh, I probably something like uh, Google Material .io style because I maintain a UI framework that is in that style. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit too saturated. As much as I like that color. Okay. Yay. The um, I think yeah we we've gotten this you know to a stopping point if that makes any sense. Um. Let's see. Um, so yeah, like, I, I'd say that with that next time, you know, maybe after we finish up the Ferris wheel or something, we will, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're going in the right direction with this stuff, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired of the pier. I'm just getting bored. Uh, what, you know, water terrain is less, uh, perform it and I also don't think it works with every art style and I kind of like having a little more control over the ocean I want to do like little like wave textures you know going out from the sea I think that'll look good uh, we'll see what we'll, and who knows maybe we'll end up using it like I I don't like using it but if it ends up being the best way to get decent looking water we'll see I We'll, we'll we'll have something. We'll, the water will not just be this. We'll get something, okay? But that'll be done at a different time. Um, thank you all very much for stopping by. I I think we, we have a pretty good. I think I think we're I think we're getting to a pretty good spot. Next time we'll probably be doing some of the docks, and uh, then and a little bit more cleanup on uh, this area. Um. Yeah, I think, uh, and after that, we can either do a building or some of the park stuff, but like, yeah, we're just starting to, to fill all this in. 
Thank you, thank you. No, y'all are the GOAT for uh, continuing to show up, even though this isn't the most exciting development out there. But I think, I think at a distance, just we're starting to see a pretty nice looking map, you know? Um, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, yeah, uh, I will see y'all tomorrow. Okay, yeah, uh, same time, same place. All right.